This is Gareth Southgate, and this is the Three Lions Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Three Lions Podcast. My name is Russell Osborne and this is an independent England football supporters podcast. I should probably start calling this one uh, the Three Lionesses Podcast. Does that work? Would that work? I don't know. Anyway, that is where our focus lies now. That is where our focus lies on this episode. Welcome along. The ladies have two important World Cup qualifiers ahead of them. These are the last two before next year's tournament in Australia and New Zealand. They just need one more point to be sure of qualification. The first fixture is an away one in Austria, Saturday the 3rd of September, then home to Luxembourg on Tuesday the 6th at a sold-out. Stoke City. Amazing. Uh, It will be, though, a mere 34 days between that famous Wembley win and Austria away. In fact, the top flight of women's football, the Women's Super League, it actually hasn't even started yet. So Serena Weigman, well, she won't have seen a great deal of her players in action since that final, which is a, uh, a strange way of going into a game obviously they've all had a little bit of pre-season with their respective teams but it's uh, it's a little bit different coming up I will be chatting with Rich Laverty about the squad and the two games coming up but before that I also want to mention an episode that I've done recently one where I spoke with a Lionesses fan Rachel Major about what it was like to follow the team during the summer you can listen to that on your podcast provider of choice or threelinespodcast.com. It is still there. Some great memories. And I thank her for them. And hopefully we'll hear more from Rachel going forward. Uh, but let's start by looking at the squad Serena has announced on Wednesday the 24th of August. It is a 23-player squad. Three goalkeepers, eight defenders, five midfielders, seven forwards. So let's go through. Goalkeepers, Mary Earps. She seems to be the number one keeper at the moment. Uh, Sandy McIver is back in the frame. Ellie Roebuck is also there. Millie Bright of Chelsea. Lucy Bronze, she now is the most capped Lioness in the squad. She's also the oldest player. Jess Carter is in. Rachel Daly, who has moved back to the UK. Uh, Her move from Houston Dash to Aston Villa. She'll be playing in the Women's Super League for the next three seasons, I believe her contract is. Alex Greenwood, Demi Stokes, both of Manchester City. Leah Williamson, of course, captain. And she, who held up that trophy in the summer. Uh, Lotta Wuben Moy, also of Arsenal. They are our defenders. Five midfielders, Jordan Nobbs. Amazing that she is back. Uh, of course, she was injured before the Euros, unfortunately. Injured also before the World Cup. She really has had... An unfortunate time, Jordan Nobbs. So I'm so pleased that she is back in the frame. Georgia Stanway of Bayern Munich. Um, if you haven't seen her initiation that she done when joining Bayern Munich, I suggest you go and seek it out. That girl, <laughs> she's got balls, if you pardon the expression. Go and look at it. Go and find it. Uh, Ella Toon. Manchester United, Kira Walsh, Manchester City, Katie Zellum uh, of Manchester United is back, hoping to add to her two caps. Beth England of Chelsea, Lauren Hemp, Manchester City. Uh, Another Lauren, Lauren James uh, from Chelsea. She is the only uncapped player in the squad. She is also the youngest. um, And if you're not aware, she is also the sister of Chelsea's Reese James, but that's that's not a 
fact I want to keep referring to. Um, she's a player in her own right, not just sister of Rhys James. Uh, Beth Mead of Arsenal. Nikita Paris, now of Manchester United, after she made the move from Arsenal to Manchester United. Alessia Russo of Manchester United. Uh, and Ebony Salmon has been recalled. She is currently playing and scoring goals for fun uh, for Houston Dash at the moment. She has got one cap to her name. Uh, it is a squad uh, with an average age of 25 and a half. It's got 787 caps across it. Wow. Uh, And 133 goals. Uh, Now, of course, there are a few notable omissions from that squad. Jill Scott and Ellen White, of course, have retired. And no doubt we will uh, speak about those two with Rich in a moment. Hannah Hampton, she was the third goalkeeper during the Euros. Uh, She's not selected for this squad because of personal issues. And then Fran Kirby, she is injured. And the other major name, Chloe Kelly, of course, goal scorer in that final. Uh, She also is injured. And unfortunately, she is not in the squad. A squad may well change by the time this podcast is out, but we will see. That is the 23 names that Serena Weigman has selected as of the 24th of August. It's a squad that features six Manchester City players, five Manchester United, four from Chelsea, four from Arsenal, one from Aston Villa, one from Barcelona, one from Bayern Munich and one from Houston Dash. It's always my pleasure to welcome back to the Three Lions podcast, Rich Laverty. Hi, Rich. Morning, mate. You okay? I'm very well, thank you. Been a little while since we spoke. How was your summer? All right? <laughs> Busy. Um, yeah, it's it's strange now. It feels like a long time ago, even though it's less than a month, obviously, since, um, since it finished. But yeah, like once you get back into sort of domestic stuff and obviously with Sheffield United, yeah, it... it it does feel like a long time ago, even though it's only three and a half weeks. Yeah, I mean, I I read one of your pieces, one of your many pieces, um, but there was one piece I saw you done, which was after the whole the tournament had finished, but from a journalistic point of view, um, which I found found really quite interesting. And what what went into a a, a summer tournament like that? Yeah, it's. Um... It's a weird one because, like, it's a great job. It really is. Like, you know, we all love doing it and, you know, we're so privileged to do it and also have the access that we do and and be able to go to games and get paid to go to games and things like that. But tournaments are hard, like, from you know, it's not really from start to finish. It's way before it starts, you know. It's the the squad announcements and, you know, the endless media days and interviews and write-ups and transcribing and, it's like an endless cycle. And then obviously that's before the tournament even starts. And once the tournament starts, you know, you're doing something every minute of every day, you know, you're leaving grounds probably three, four hours after games end, you know, when it's eight o'clock kickoffs, you might not be leaving until 1, 2 a.m. And then you're up again the next morning and it, it's full on. It's enjoyable, but it, it's full on. And probably something maybe people don't quite understand how busy it is, but like I, I never want to sound like I'm complaining because it's a great job. And obviously the end product of it was, you know, we're now some of the few people in the world that can say they've seen England win a major tournament um, and covered England winning a major tournament because, you know, it's 1966 and 2022 and that's it. So we're part of a very privileged and, and small group. So, yeah, I mean, it's it was all worthwhile. Absolutely. And I, I mean, it's the link to that, I think, is via your Twitter or something. But was it Her her Game Magazine? I think, did you do it for that one or was it? Our Game one? Magazine, yeah, it's on there somewhere. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a good one. Go go seek it out. Uh, but as you say, no no less than a month later, um, we are, we're looking at Serena's squad for the last two World Cup qualifying games, which she announced it's yeah. What 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 do you make of the the squad? There's only a, a few slight differences, aren't there? Yeah, I think it's it's good to be honest. I mean, obviously, 
Um, we knew Ellen and, and Jill weren't going to be there. Um, probably knew Chloe Kelly wasn't going to be after she got an injury for Man City the other night against Real Madrid. Obviously, Fran is injured and, and Hannah's got some personal things going on. So it's allowed opportunities, I think. I think Ebony, Ebony Salmon for Ellen was the natural replacement. Um, I think Ebony's the one now. She's got a very different skill set to any other English player. Um, she's in very good form. She's growing as a player. She's still young. And I think Ebony will be there to stay now. I don't think she'll drop out. I think she'll be there now to stay. I think, I think Lauren James is an interesting one because she's probably not not probably ready in terms of the game time she's getting, but she is a talent. We know that, you know, she's probably a once in a generation talent and they've been given the opportunity probably through Chloe being unavailable to sort of say, okay, well, look, we know Lauren's going to be an England regular one day. Let's get her in just for this camp, see where she's at and, and go from there. I think it's probably the same with um, Katie Zellan coming back in with, with Fran being out and obviously Jill stepping away and um, and Sandy McKeever as well, obviously coming back in with Hannah being unavailable. So, yeah, I think it's good. Jordan Nobbs is obviously back in as well and, you know, we know what Jordan can do. So, I think all round pretty sensible changes from Serena. She was never going to rip it up, obviously, you know, off no. the back of that, um, the success the team had and the fact there's only 11 months to go to the World Cup. You can't afford to rip it up and, and start again even if you wanted to. So, I think the changes are uh, I probably, apart from maybe Lauren, but again, you know, an opportunity has presented itself there with Chloe being out this camp. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much maybe what we would have expected. And I know we shouldn't sort of compare the the two sides, but I'm looking at it in a way that maybe Gareth Southgate has done for the the, the men's senior team, where he'll bring a player in and maybe just analyse their personality and what they're like around the around the training pitch around the camp and and that side of things they may not even get a game in in the the games that come up is this a possibility with with Lauren James she may not even take part in one of the games it's just a case of seeing how she fits in 100% I I think people don't always either remember or, or, or appreciate or take into account how important that is because I think people get fixated on on games, but, you know, the games are only 180 minutes and, you know, realistically, yeah, Austria away is a tough match, but, you know, Luxembourg's a, a gimme and mm. you know, England obviously just need a, a result um, to get to the World Cup, which is a given, you know, England will qualify for the World Cup through, through these games. So in a sense, it, it is an opportunity to try things out and but what people forget is that yeah the, the two games are only 180 minutes but they're going to be together from I think it's from Monday through to sort of a week on on Wednesday or Thursday so it's 11 12 days so it's not 180 minutes you know it's nearly two weeks where they're together the whole time they're obviously going to travel they're going to go away to Austria so it, it's important you know international teams they don't succeed if if Everyone's not together, you know. You look at the Euros; they were they were away for six, seven weeks together. When you take into account pre camps and you know the fact they went all the way through the tournament, which was four weeks, so you need the right characters, you need the right personalities, you need players that can cope with it. And I'm not saying Ebony can't or, or Lauren can't, etc. But you're right; you need to find that out. You need to ease them in. You know, throwing them straight into a tournament. And that pressure and, and everything is not the right way to go. You know, easing them in, you know, a little trip to Austria, come back, play Luxembourg, you know, and, and ease them in that way is is probably a lot easier. So, yeah, you do. You, you do. You know, you need to know that. You need to see how they are around the girls, how they gel, how they take in the whole experience of being away from, you know, familiarity for so long. And they're important things. They're important yeah. things. And if you're going to be an international player, you need to, you know, not fit into it. You know, I'm not. I'm sure every single player isn't best mates with every single player, but you just need to be able to deal with it. You know, deal with the, the situation of being in a group for for twelve days. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Austria. There, they are, of course, uh, first up for England away, and uh, turned into a bit of a familiar 
opposition of, of late. Of course, they were the, the first opponents during the, the Euro campaign. And it was only in the, the World Cup qualifying. We only beat them by a goal to nil in, in that as well. Expecting a similarly hard game? Yeah, they're always tough. They're very solid. They're very well set up. Um, Arena Furman's a very good coach. And, you know, they did really well at the Euros. You know, they, they gave England one of their toughest tests, certainly the toughest test in the group stage, um, a lot tougher than, than Norway or Northern Ireland managed. And like you said, it was a tough game as well when we played them in, in the qualifiers. It's been 1-0 both times. So, yeah, I expect it will be. You know, England have a target on their backs now as well. You know, everyone's going to want to beat them. So... And, and Austria themselves are obviously, you know, trying to get to the World Cup. So it will be tough. Um, but you would expect England to have enough quality to win the game. But yeah, I would fully expect it to be a tough match because they've got really good players. You know, you look at most of their squad now is playing, you know, in, in the Bundesliga in Germany. And, and, you know, that's one of the best leagues in Europe. So it'll be tough. They're a very well coached, well drilled side. And yeah, um, the good thing is, obviously, like you say, England are very familiar with them now because, yeah, it feels like we play them all the time. <laughs> and then, of course, they come back to Stoke um, <laughs> to play Luxembourg. The The previous game, the away game for that, was was one of the 10-0 the victories. Um, what the scoreline will be this time, who knows, but we, we can only expect it to be something similar. But I'm more more pleased by the fact that it's a sold out Stoke City, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think if I'm being honest, I think you'll any England game now, I think will get sold out. I think wherever you put them, I just think that the interest now obviously is, is off. I mean, England games did well anyway, even before the European Championships, but I think now off the back of, of the Euros, maybe if you put England Luxembourg at Wembley, maybe it wouldn't, but I, I think it's sensible taking them around the country. I, I, I wouldn't. I think Wembley, Wembley's such a sort of, it's a prestigious thing. Like, it's an honour to play there. I think if you play, like, the men play every single game there. I, I know there's a nice part of having a national stadium, but I also like the idea of taking these kinds of games around the country. I think if you play in the USA, like, in October and have that at Wembley, that's a little bit different. But I think it's a good opportunity still to take the team around the country and, and let fans in other parts of the country watch them. So, yeah, I think it's... It's great, but like, yeah, I think you put England anywhere now. I think they're going to sell stadiums out really quickly, and it's a uh, it's another great opportunity. And maybe that's the game where we might see, you know, a Lauren James or, or someone like that for a little bit. Because yeah, obviously, it's not going to be the most competitive test they've ever had, but it's just a game that you you've got to play, get on with it, do the job, and and then it's eyes forward. Yeah, but is these um, games that you're going to be going to working on? No, actually, so, I mean, I'll be covering them from home, but um, I'm not going to Austria, and then the Luxembourg game actually clashes with the with Sheffield United match, so um, I won't actually be in Stoke, but I'll be following it closely, and I'll be at the USA game um, next month in October, because I don't think that clashes with anything, so, yeah, hopefully um, I'll be watching. Um, I think, like I said, the Austria game will be a, an interesting test just to see where, where we're at and they're at from a month ago. But yeah, I think it's, um, like I said, it's just a case of, of trying to get the job done because everyone's going to be, like I said, England have a target on their backs now and you know they're, they're going to be viewed as a scalp by everybody. Well, they've got a, a target on their backs, as you say, but they've got a target to to aim for. when We, we are pretty much there, the World Cup. How do we look at that now? Is that a is that a distinct possibility, or is it too early to say? Winning the World Cup, yeah. Um, I think when you go into it as European champions, you have a chance. Um, I think that the exciting thing for England is that you know I said before the tournament that I felt it may be just a tournament too early. Because, yes, there were some experienced players in the squad, but there were question marks about where they were at, you know, in terms of their form. And there was question marks about whether those young players would be quite ready, you know, for the step up. And we were talking about the likes of Alessio Russo and Ella Toon and Chloe Kelly and Lauren Hemp and people like that. And, you know, Russo, you know, had a huge impact off the bench. Toon had a huge impact off the bench. Kelly had a huge impact off the bench. And, 
I think the question mark now is we have to get those players starting. You know, I think with, with Ellen White gone, obviously Russo probably will start. I think it's an opportunity for Toon as well now with Kirby out of the squad. It's a shame Kelly's not there, but, you know, we've got good options still with Beth Mead on the right and, and Lauren Hemp on the left. So, and like I said, with Ebony and, and Lauren and, you know, you know, even people like, you know, Leah Williamson are still there mid-20s. So, I think now it's that case of, okay, they've done it. You know, they've shown they can do it. What we need now from these players is to show they can do it as starting players. You know, that's going to be the big thing at the World Cup next year because I think Russo will start. I think Toon will start. I think Kelly will be pushing. Um, I think Ebony will be pushing. I really do. And, you know, that's the that's the question right now. But they've shown, you know, they can beat anybody in Europe. They had a t- you know, it's not like they had it easy. They had to play Norway in the group stage and then they've played Spain, Sweden and Germany, you know, who were three of the, you know, biggest favourites for the tournament. You know, we all talked up Spain. I particularly talked up Sweden. I, I really fancied Sweden to win the tournament and Germany are always there. So obviously you throw back in the US, which, you know, we'll get a good idea of next month when we play them at Wembley and, you know, Canada are always tough. Australia, you know, as the host, they'll be right on it. But, but you can never say you're going to win a World Cup because there's so much competition. But I think England have firmly put themselves in a position where they can go and compete for it. But the thing we have now is we say this every tournament and people go, well, you know, England have never won anything. You know, where's the proof? Well, we've got the proof now, you know, and that puts more pressure on, you know, it puts more pressure on to succeed. But if people want to say, oh, you know, England are never, well, they are now, you know, they're European champions. They've proven they can win. So, yeah, I, I, I firmly believe England will be one of the favourites, but it's going to be a tough tournament. And we say it every tournament. The next tournament's always the toughest one because everyone's getting better and better. Very true. There's a long way to go until that comes around, though, although I'm sure it'll come around fairly quickly. Well, we've covered the squad. We've looked at Austria and Luxembourg, and we, we've looked at the players for the future, but it's we really ought to acknowledge two players that have recently retired and, and have made such a, a huge contribution to, to to women's football and and of course the the lionesses in both Ellen White and Jill Scott who both announced their their retirements recently. Yeah, it was probably not a huge. I, I was a little bit more surprised with Ellen. I thought maybe Ellen might retire um, from international football. I thought maybe she would go on at club level. Yeah, Jill didn't shock me. Um, I, I think as well, I think when you win and you win a home tournament like that, you know, there's no better way to go out. Like, you know, people say, oh, the World Cup's only a year away. But I still think even if you win the World Cup, I think winning the Euros on home soil is, is probably a better feeling. And especially when it's your first major tournament as well. So it was probably whether they'd already decided pre-tournament, I've no idea. But I think it's, it, it was such a good way to go out and, yeah, it's, it's sad. It always is, you know, because obviously media-wise, you get to know these players incredibly well. And, you know, I can't remember a time where an England squad didn't have Ellen White and didn't have Jill Scott. You know, Jill's always been such a character. Like, <laughs> I always loved speaking to her, interviewing her. You know, she was one of the first people I ever interviewed in women's football um, when I went to Man City's launch. At the start of 2014, Jill was one of their main signings. So, you know, and Ellen's always been, again, you know, just true professional, you know, consummate professional, great goal scorer, obviously England's top goal scorer in history. So, yeah, it's sad, but it happens, you know, it comes, the, the, the thing I always say when players retire is it's, it's it's exciting because you get to see who's coming next. And, you know, we're now going to get to see Ebony Salmon and we're now going to get to see Lauren James and people like that. So, that's the important thing that if people step away, you've got people to replace them and, and England have. And, you know, it'll become second nature, I suppose. It's the same, you know, when Kaz Carney stepped away or Farrah Williams or, or Casey Stoney, et cetera. You know, you just, you get used to it. You say your goodbyes and then someone else comes along and, and you get excited about them and, and you sort of quickly shuffle on to what's next. And, you know, this England team probably now is, is bang on in that transition where, you know, we've said goodbye to a lot already and we're saying goodbye to that last few now, you know, that Steph as well, obviously still playing, but not in the squad. And it does sort of feel like a bit of a 
a new era now because we've won something, we've got that reputation and and we've probably got as young a squad as, as we've had in a long time. I mean, I joked yesterday, I'm older than the entire squad now for the first time in a, in a long time, which is quite depressing because Jill and, and Ellen were keeping me uh, keeping me below that line. But that's where we're at now. It's a young squad, you know, and um, it's exciting because, like I said, they've already proved they can win something and probably half the squad is not even at their peak yet. So, you know, we're sad, obviously, and, you know, we wish them well and, you know, they've been great people and great players. But I think we're all so excited for what's coming next because this England team has won something already and there's hopefully and probably more to come. I know um, Jill Scott has expressed an interest in the coaching side of things, um, which which would be good, I think, even her enthusiasm. Um, but what, where do we think Ellen White will will see her next? And I'm sure in either of their cases, you'll, you'll still come into contact with them, will you? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're popping up places. I actually think they'd both be quite good pundits. I think Jill just has the character for it. Like, she's funny, she's amusing. Um, you know, she does her own little bits at the minute anyway, like the the, the Coffee Club podcast and things like that. Yeah. So, and I think Ellen would be actually, because I think Ellen's a, you know, a bit more thoughtful, you know, she reads the game really well and she's very well spoken. But yeah, I, I will see them pop up. I've got no doubt about that, whether it's regular or not. I don't think, don't see either of them going into coaching. I don't know if they've done their coaching badges, but I think, I think Jill definitely will see around a lot on TV and, and things like that. And I think hopefully we'll see Ellen as well. But yeah, I think if we do see them, it might be more media side than, than coaching side. Is that a good thing, though, in, in your opinion? Do we need more players going into the, the coaching side of things? Um, yeah, we do. And, uh, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of players that are doing their coaching badges, but obviously it's just not for everyone. You know, mm. some people... It's difficult as well, because I suppose so many of them... You know, the, the older ones are now that are retiring, you know, large chunks of their career, they were working as well and, and working alongside football and probably didn't have the time to even think about coaching badges. Whereas, you know, players now that are full time can concentrate on football, probably have a little bit more time to dedicate to to coaching. Because um, you're right, you know, we haven't seen a huge amount of the players that have retired lately go that way. Obviously, Casey has. Yeah. Uh, you know, farrah has gone on to the TV side. Alex Scott's gone on to the TV side. Kaz carney has gone on to the TV side. And, you know, none of them really went into coaching or anything. So, yeah, we, you know, we do. We want to see more and we hope we see more. But I think it might be more this generation that maybe have the time um, to do their coaching badges. But, you know, it's important we bring young coaches through as well, not just former players and mm. It's um, it's an interesting balance, but I think it's also good that we're seeing so many go on the media because there's so many opportunities now, whether it's covering the women's game or the men's game. Um, you know, I mean, we see Alex Scott pop up absolutely everywhere these days. And, you know, Cass Carney's done media in the men's game, uh, Lucy Ward, Siobhan Chamberlain, people like that. So it's good that those opportunities are there. But yeah, hopefully, I, th- I think we will see more go into coaching um, over the years. Well, we shall watch this space, I guess. Rich, thank you, as always, for for joining us on on the Freelines podcast. Um, No doubt we'll speak again. Not a problem. Thank you. Many thanks go to Rich Laverty there for his time. You can follow him on Twitter at Rich J Laverty, where you'll find links to all of his previous articles that he's written, all well worth a read. Now, both the forthcoming Austria and Luxembourg games will be available in the UK to watch. They're going to be on ITV. That's Austria on Saturday the 3rd and Luxembourg on Tuesday the 6th of September. Uh, If you're going to one or both of them, safe travels enjoy them and I'll be back with you very soon to round up on those games I hope you can join me for that Uh, also don't forget you can follow the podcast on social media on the likes of Twitter Facebook and Instagram just search three lines podcast give it a like enough subscribe all that sort of thing that would be 
most appreciated. So until the next time, take care of yourselves. Cheers. <laughs>